Hello, welcome back. Uh, <laughs> oh, I need to change that. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Okay, so I uh, know I have a curse word there, uh, and I'm very, very sorry. I'm not actually sorry. I'm just going to do my best to wait at least seven minutes to start cursing about this sock because these are the coolest freaking socks I've ever worked on. Uh, so, uh, just so that way I can do a little preamble so I can start cursing about the sock. <laughs> and I'm not sorry for that. Um, I want to talk about uh, how this sock is constructed. So this is not constructed in the way that you would typically structure a sock. So this is not done in like top down and you work in a spiral. It's not done toe up and you work in a spiral. Um, this sock is worked flat for the most part. Okay, so the cuff is worked in the round, the toe is worked in the round, everything else is worked flat. And it's how this designer, uh, General Hoff's, Hoff Stepper? Hog Buffer. Hog Buffer. Ooh. <laughs> General Hog Buffer. Um, it's, it's so... They have a lot of cool sock patterns as I'm looking at their Ravelry um, like pattern store. Uh, they've got some really cool sock patterns that I'm going to be looking through because they are very interestingly put together. Anyway, um, I'm getting off traffic. So uh, I do want to talk about the constructive uh, construction. So it is constructed flat. Um, and um, if you are familiar with the um, the next steps, I think it's step four, the sock book from Patents. I'm pretty sure this sock is in there. Uh, it's a sideways sock. And the idea behind that sock is that you actually like cast on all of your stitches from the top of the sock all the way down to the toe. And you put in stitch markers as you go. <laughs> Uh, and then the idea is that you are working and adding, um, you're increasing and decreasing at different points for you to uh, make your heel and your toe, but you're working flat. So you ha will have a long piece of work like this. Um, and at the very end, what you'll do is you fold it over itself and then you sew the bottom edge together to make your socks. I tried making that socks sock early in my knitting career and I hated every second of it. Um, partially, it's, uh, I think part of the problem was that I was using, uh, straight needles, which I don't like using straight needles. I knew I didn't like using straight needles. I think I was trying to use it as like do a project on straight needles to make me like them. Um, but just the way that I knit, um, like the, the my right hand needle moves too much. So the end of my needles, like doing great big circles. <laughs> uh, so that's why I don't like using straight needles. Um, so I worked on th these socks um, and like I sewed them up <laughs> like you're supposed to. Um, but because I trusted my stitch markers a little too much, I made mistakes uh, and I didn't catch them um, when I sewed them up. Like it was a really like off center sock. So like instead of it lining up here, like where my thumbs are, it would line up like this. Uh, and that bothered me. So I never actually did the second sock. I also picked a color that I didn't like uh, because again, I was trying to go out of my com comfort zone. I try to do that a lot with my knitting uh, and I always come back. <laughs> uh, so I picked a like yellow and lime green sock, which I like green, but I don't like yellow. And it was primarily yellow. And I just, I just, I didn't want to keep working on that sock. Anyway, so um, I worked on that, disliked it. Uh, anyway. Um, you might remember me uh, hinting at this sock earlier uh, there, uh, I want to say in August, where I was working on my uh, January thermal socks uh, by the Knit Picks team. Um, I think that's in the Toasty Toes book lit, where it's just 12 pa sock patterns, monthly sock patterns. And uh, uh, that sock is currently kind of in hibernation. <laughs> I guess I don't want to work on it. Um, and, uh, I did hint that I was just going to do that one sock of that one pattern. And then the other one was going to be this pattern. So without any further ado, if you look down in the description, it's been down there this entire time. The name of the pattern is Stripe Tees. Um, so S-T-R-I-P-E Tees. Um, and it's by General, uh, Hog Buffer. Uh, and like the way that this pattern is written, it's so good. It's so good. Damn, it's so good. Um, like, I, I don't, I don't want to hold off any longer talking about it, but I have to. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll curse when I get to seven minutes. Uh, so this is the sock thus far. 
So I am using a self-striping sock uh, yarn. Um, I am using um, Arne and Carlos's like Regia a colorway. I got it for Christmas last year uh, from my mother. Um, I got two balls. I got a red ball and a blue ball um, and she bought them at Felice and Harmony. I think there might be one or two balls of the red colorway left. I will put that link down in the description if, uh, if it's still there when I'm uploading this. But if it's not down in the description, it's because it's not on the website anymore. Uh, so this is the sock. So you can see how it is coming out as like patchwork. Uh, so I'll open it up so you can see more of it at once. Uh, so I've got that cool patchwork. Um, there. Just, it's so cool. It's so cool. Look, look at that. Okay. So like this looks really cool. Um, if you used a gradient sock yarn, it would look really good too. Um, but I just need to talk about the construction. It's so flipping cool. Uh, so you start the top. This is a free pattern, so you can find it down in the description and you can download it and you can do it. Um, just make sure that if you're going to start this pattern that you have uh, circular needles that are long enough. So you'll want to make sure that you have at least a 24 inch circular needle um, to be able to work your socks. Um, and you need to have double pointed needles in the sizes as well. Okay, <laughs> so uh, in so far in this sock, I have used so many needles. Um, that's my only problem with the sock, but it just comes with the territory. So um, the way that the sock has worked is that you do your cuff. So this is just a typical cuff. Uh, this is a, uh, I did a twisted German uh, cast on alternating with a long tail cast on for my cuff for giving me the extra stretchiness. Um, I do believe the pattern calls for a twisted uh, rib but I uh, am using a yarn I've not used before. Um, I'm using more stitches than I've used before because you have to. I'm using a smaller needle than I'm using before. Um, so I've made a lot of different changes and I just didn't, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to make the cuff too, too tight um, to get it onto my foot because this is for me. Um, so I did just a regular uh, cast on, like a regular one by one rib to have an extra stretchy cuff. Um, and I have, tried on the cuff, it at least, at least fits. I have not tried it on since I have done that, but uh, just judging by the, the size of the sock, it looks like it's going to be, looks like it's going to be fine. So the next step um, of you working your socks is um, you actually, uh, which one is it? This one, this strip you see here, you work that. So you take uh, a number of stitches. There's a lot of math that's involved in this pattern. Um, the, the general <laughs> warns you of that. Um, so they recommend that you use a yarn that you're familiar with. They recommend that you use a needle set that you're familiar with, which of course I didn't do either of those things because I like to make my life hard. Uh, and uh, oh, it's eight minutes now, I can curse about it. So fucking cool. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, so um, there's some math involved. Uh, so they recommend uh, a number of different things to try to make it as easy, easy as possible. And the idea is that you're taking sections of your stitches and you're working a strip. So you are going to be working down a sixth of, a so of the sock at a time and you work straight down to where you would start your heel. Uh, and instead of starting your heel, what you do is you work across and then you go and you pick up the stitches across the, the side of your uh, work here. So this side, as I went and I picked up my stitches and then I worked the next section of, of, uh, uh, of stitches. <laughs> uh, and then as you're going, you are um, uh, either knitting two together at the end or purling two together. Oh. Depending on where you are, I believe, um, I believe the majority of it, you're purling two stitches together at the very end. And what you're doing is you're purling one of those picked up stitches together with one of your other stitches that are from like the strip. And that's what's sewing the sock together as you go along. So it does create a little bit of a seam on the inside. I don't know how well you can see that. It does create a bit of a seam on the inside. Uh, but I'm hoping that's not going to be too much of a problem. Um, there is other, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting in my head myself. I'm getting too excited about this sock pattern because it's so fucking cool. Uh, <laughs> it's so fucking cool. Anyway, um, so you keep doing that. And then when you finish the third one, because you do uh, three and that's the back half of your stitches, then what you do um, is you go and you start your heel flap. So you work your heel flap as you would work any other heel flap. You turn your heel just like you would turn your heel normally. And then what you do is you go and you pick up some of your stitches 
And the way that you pick up your stitches is the really ingenious part. The first time I picked up my stitches, I did it wrong. Uh, but the second time I got it right. Yeah. So uh, in order for you to, uh, for this to work with it, you having to constantly break your yarn. Um, what uh, the general recommends that you do to pick up your stitches is that when you're picking up your stitches for the side of your, of your heel here, you actually pick up half of the stitches that you normally would. So um, when you do a typical slip stitch, um, like a slipped selvage edge on your sock, you just pick up one stitch for each selvage edge stitch that's there. Um, and then you picked up your stitches for your heel and your golden. Um, but the thing is, is that the way that the sock is constructed, if you were to go and pick up your stitches, um, you can't just continue over the top half of your sock because it doesn't exist yet. So what the general recommends that you do is you pick up every second stitch so that way, when you get to the end of where you need to finish picking up, you pick up that stitch and then you go grab your other needle and you go and you slip those two stitches you just picked up and you pick up in the other direction. So you come back to where you need to be. Uh, so I did it wrong and you can see, uh, you can kind of see it there. It's really, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, I will take a picture of it as well. Uh, so that way you can... You can, I'll, I'll take a picture of it and I'll point to the, the problem. Uh, so what you're supposed to do is you pick up a knit uh, one way and then on your way back, you're supposed to be picking up and purling. Um, and I was just like, ah, I'll just pick up a knit. It's not gonna make a difference. It made a little bit of a difference. Um, one that I can see and then it, it bothers me a little bit, but uh, I have fixed that for the, the top of the sock. So it's fine. Um, you pick up half the stitches, you purl up the other half of the stitches that you skipped the first time. So that way, when you go and you work your, uh, work the bottom of your foot, um, and you work your selvage edges, um, you don't have to worry about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So after you've uh, picked up your stitches here, uh, what you do is you work all the way down to the toe, and then you pick up your stitches again, and you come and you pick up all of your, uh, you pick up the rest of your edging stitches here for your sock, for the, the heel flap. You pick up all of the bottom of the sock and then the same amount of stitches on the other side. Uh, and then you do the entire foot, like the entire sole of the sock at the same time. So uh, the sole of the sock is a little bit bigger than the rest of it. Um, and then once you finish that and you go all the way to the toe, uh, you pick up and you go back all the way down, pick up your, your, your socks, pick up the, the, the rest of your side stitches, sorry, this side, pick up the rest of your side stitches for your, um, your, uh, like the, the heel gusset and all of that. And you're doing your decreases there at the bottom of your sock to, uh, do your, it's so freaking cool. So, so freaking cool. Anyway, uh, you continue up, up to the heel. And once you've done that, now it's time for you to work the top of the sock. So you go, f you pick up your stitches and this is why you need so many different needles. The first part of this, I was just using the one, um, the one circular needle that I had um, holding my stitches here at the top for my, uh, my cuff. The, that was the circular needle that I started with. And then I was just using double pointed needles to do the rest of the work. Um, but once I got to this part here where I was picking up the entirety of my sock, I had to go into my uh, Tiago's uh, mini set, which is the set that I've been using for this. Um, I had to go in and uh, grab uh, another needle and make a long needle with uh, using my li my little enders here. So that way I could pick up my stitches and they would be held while I was working my my next couple of um, stripes here all the way from the cuff all the way up to the toe. So the next thing that you do is after you finish that one, you do a second stripe exactly the same as you've been doing. And then the, the thing that just like clinched this as being the absolute perfect thing, which I should have seen this coming from a mile away, but I didn't, um, is you do need to have a really long circular needle. So I have a really long, um, I actually use the connectors in my uh, Chiagu mini set so that way I can combine them. So there's the connector um, for my mini set holding two of my longer, uh, longer cords together. Um, and now I, oh, I've dropped some stitches. I've been so excited about talking about this, I've dropped stitches. Um, let me just quickly pick all that back up. And actually those two are supposed to be knit. Um, yeah, these two are supposed to be knit and that's why I dropped them. Boop. Boop. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to pull these like that. So that way they, I don't lose them again. Uh, yeah. 
So what you do is you go and you pick up your stitches all the way across, like all the way down like you did before. And then you come and work across your, your cuff, picking up those stitches again for the first time since you've done your cuff, because it's the last section. And then you go and you do that technique where you go and you pick up one, slip one, pick one, oh, sorry, skip one, pick one, slip, uh, skip one, pick one, skip one, uh, all the way up and to when you get to the toe and then you turn it right back around and then you pick up and purl the stitches that you had skipped before so you can come back down and now all I'm doing is I'm working back and forth across these stitches and I'm just as I get to the end of like the row um, I am uh, purling two together to uh, sew one side up this side and then when I get to the other side I'm slip slip knitting to, to sew it up there and it creates uh, some like really cool like just <sighs> Just some really cool texture. So uh, again, I'll take pictures. I'm gonna take so many pictures of this. You can see that there is like that seam running down the whole thing. So it's kind of like stitching the patchwork together. Um, and then once you're finished uh, working uh, the sock, so when I am get down to the bottom here, um, I will just work around um, here at the top to just kind of like glue all of the stitches here together. And then I'm just gonna make a toe like I always do. Um, I like, I'm just having so much fun with the sock. I'm just having so much fun with the sock. Um, so last night for me, uh, so this would be Monday night for you guys. Um, we had uh, knit night here, um, like craft night at my place. And um, uh, I finished my blanket. <laughs> so for me, I just finished this yesterday. I finished the border of my blanket. Um, and then I just picked these back up here and I was just working. Uh, I started the second stripe from from the cuff all the way to the toe. And in the, I don't know, hour it took us to watch an episode of uh, The Fall of the House of Usher. Usher. Very good show if, if you're looking for a show on Netflix to watch and you're okay with uh, gore and you're, it's, there's not a lot of gore, but there's more gore than I would like. Uh, but if you're okay with that, but you like, you want a really good story, highly recommend. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, but just at the very end, I finished that and I went and I picked up and I was just picking up that last thing and my my mind was blown um, as I was working at it. So uh, uh, I mentioned it a couple of times when uh, Sarah was still here because Jess is my friend, Sarah. She comes over and we just do craft night. She cross stitches, Jess does whatever. Uh, I, she was cross stitching and crocheting last night and I was crocheting and knitting. Um, and like when I got to that, like, I just had to gush about how fucking cool these socks are. <laughs> so fucking cool. Um, so I gushed about them there. And then after uh, Sarah left, um, like Jess and I were chatting about all different kinds of things. And when there was a lull in the conversation, I would just like, <laughs> at Jess, like, I'm. <sighs> it's such a fucking cool sock pattern so if you are confident in your sock making skills uh so this is not a beginner sock pattern um but if you are confident in your sock making skills that if if you are the type of person that can sit down with a ball of yarn and a set of needles and make a sock without a pattern i highly recommend these um if you like the pattern that that the general has made is really well written um uh, you just need to have some scratch paper <laughs> to work with it. So that way you can kind of like um, write out a pattern for you if you really require that pattern. Um, and the, they tell you how to do that. Okay. So don't, don't worry. Don't worry about that. Like the pattern is written really, really well. Um, it's just that um, the very bizarre nature of how these are knit um, just makes it I think it would make it too difficult a pattern for someone who isn't able to make socks as a second nature uh, because there's so many different things that are going to blow your mind, so many different things that don't make any sense while you're doing it, um, that if you aren't, if you're still struggling with making a regular sock, um, I, I don't recommend doing this pattern until you are comfortable with making socks. Um, instead, if you're not comfortable with making socks, peruse through the general's uh, sock library because it looks like all that they do is socks and they have some really cool socks um they have so many cool socks uh yeah 
Yeah. So I just, I, I just wanted to gush about this pattern um, because it's so just mind boggling fucking cool. Uh, and please excuse my French. Uh, I know I don't generally curse on the channel, but like, <laughs> I don't know how else to get across how excited I am about this sock while still being calm and coherent. <laughs> That's how I feel about these socks. They're so fucking cool. Um, so uh, <laughs> if you like today's episode of me cursing, let me know down in the description. I might do it more. Uh, and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.